So the Karnataka hijab row has been going on for the past two months and it's also spilled over to other states now. And um, the court order, the interim court order in a way has ratified, uh, you know, for what the government wants to do. Uh, so you've been meeting the girls for the, uh, you know, you said you've been meeting the girls as part of the fraternity movement. What has been the conversation been with the girls? What is it that they exactly want? And uh, what do you think this whole uh, row is all about? Right. So uh, we have been traveling uh, within Karnataka in several districts, meeting the girls who are directly affected, who have been asked to uh, not enter uh, their classrooms, their colleges because they wear hijab. Uh, and surprisingly, not surprisingly, they had been wearing these hijabs uh, ever since. And all of a sudden, uh, the college administration decides that you can't wear it. We also know that there was uh, an involvement of right-wing outfits who pressurized college administrations to get these girls to remove their hijabs in attend classes. We know how that escalated. We, we saw the video of Muskan where she was heckled by 30, 40 odd Hindu men. We also uh, are uh, aware of the way uh, the intimidation that is being taken uh, taking place on the part of the right wing. The, the rioting that they are doing, the stone pelting. They even attacked one of the petitioner's brothers. So we met the girls and uh, they, they are concerned about their education. They are concerned. They, they, they are uh, going through mental breakdowns. It is uh, this is not a fight they should be, have been fighting in. in they're teenage girls. We should not the the country the nation should not expect such bravery out of them. They've been not in their in, inside their classrooms for over a month now. It's almost two months. The first incident came on 28th of uh, uh, December, and it's uh, February 28th today, and it's two months now since the first. Uh, incident took place and uh, the interim order has further uh, escalated the entire issue the college administrations are misusing misinterpreting the order and uh, banning hijab from the colleges where it was already a norm it was already a part of the uniform uh, uh, i also want to specify that these girls have explicitly said that they are not against uniform they wear their uniform, their college uniform, whatever the uniform that is man mandated. On top of it, they wear a hijab, which is a part of their religious faith. Uh, so we, the way we see it is that there is a specific propaganda that is working. There is this uh, Hindutva ideology, there is this Hindu supremacy ideology, which, is, which, which uh, has made uh, Muslimness unacceptable in public spaces. And this is an iteration, this is a manifestation of that same Hindutva uh, supremacy that does not accept Muslim women, Muslims as uh, equal citizens so if you wear hijab you cannot be a part of our classrooms right. um, so um, apart from um, you know the hijab row I mean the, for the past two, two months since the uh, thing has started the controversy has started there have been many MLAs from the BJP as well as MPs uh, who have been speaking against the hijab row and many of them have uh, asked Muslim women or Muslims who want to practice their faith to go to Pakistan and these are the statements that usually comes out of the BJP leaders and it has happened right. here as well. Right. Uh, so what do you think about this coming out of the government representatives uh, against uh, their own citizens? Uh, what do you think about this? Uh, it is not shocking at all. I mean, we all know the way the BJP functions. We all know the what sort of... Uh, what, what sort of discourse and what sort of rhetoric they played in to come into power. We all know that they uh, have uh, manufactured this uh, emotional uh, radicalization that hates, uh, that, that thrives on hating Muslims. And it is but uh, a link to all that, all the bigger Hindutva anti-Muslim ecosystem. In, in, that, in, in that light is what these BJP ministers keep on saying again and again. And uh, we also have been again and again saying that uh, we are not going anywhere. You, you will accept. I'm not saying you have to. You will accept our hijabs. You will accept us. In between all of this, uh, there was this uh, Bajangal member who, worker who was killed. And uh, there has been an attempt by the media. Uh, I'm not sure if you follow the Canada. I'm sure you don't follow the Canada media. But there has been an attempt in the Canada media to inflame uh, passions, uh, to instigate people, um, you know, and to uh, connect this entire murder with the hijab. Um, so you've been traveling. Uh, do you? I mean, you've spoken to the girls. Do you see? I mean, uh, what do, what do they say? I mean, do they see this as an attempt, um, you know, for to deflect the entire conversation? Right. What do you think? We we know that the way. Uh Saffron television channels, they twist facts to right. suit their narrative. And uh, from what we have found out, uh, even the uh, the 
the law enforcement uh, officers they have made a statement about the entire uh, murder situation and they have said that it has nothing to do with the hijab row and so that is the fact but we know that the saffron television channels media channels they will twist it to suit their propaganda to further uh, uh, criminalize muslims to say that see this is what happens when muslims are protesting whatever uh, we reject that kind of narrative of course at the same time these girls are concerned because that one incident which has nothing to do with the hijab uh, issue which which has nothing to do with these girls right to education these girls right to religious uh, uh, practice is being used to uh, further uh, attack them there are uh, physical assaults that have been carried out on muslim students muslim male students uh, abvp members from their colleges have heckled them they have uh, even like tried to stab them and this is escalating the the it's, it's it's a very tense situation from what i have experienced from the ground it's a very tense situation in karnataka and it is uh, almost uh, appalling the way that the majority community that the the way that uh, opposition parties are not taking it up yeah you had a taste of tense situation yourself now i mean tell us about it i mean you were asked to get out of the press con uh, press club by some one of the journalists right what happened Uh, so we just uh, con- concluded with our press conference and uh, some media channels were taking bites and uh, so a republic tv representative i don't want to call them a journalist uh, asked us that if i would be willing to give them a bite and i said no i can't i i won't be talking to you and then he started like you know he got very aggressive and he like tried to intimidate and threaten me said get out and then we will t- whatever you have to say come out and say and we will see and that kind of thing and like you know he he came at us and we just said that we don't want to talk to you because uh, we don't see you as a media channel i mean do, do you have any journalistic ethics any journalistic morals you don't and so we don't want to talk to you and uh, i mean it's a free nation i can choose who i can talk to and who i cannot talk to and uh, and the kind of aggression that was shown i mean it's it's an example of the aggression that these girls are facing from media channels in uh, karnataka right now the way journalists are running after muslim girls for a bite they are r- reaching their houses and intimidating them it's 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 all a manifestation of that and they try to do it with us thinking that we will just like you know meekly uh, start giving them a bite or whatever they try to do uh, it's unacceptable and <laughs> we will not take it from